Hello, Christopher from Fort Worth Theology. So, kind of a busy week. I have killed the domain name ForkWithTheology.com. I did this because I'm going to be honest. It never lived up to what I was hoping it would be. Some blogs, you know, they just, they don't do well. Mine was one of them. That's fine. Whatever. So, that's not really what I want to talk about. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about Flat Earth again. you got to be kidding me. I'm a creationist, okay? I believe the Bible is history. That is to say, it is an accurate history of the world, up to the time of the Apostolic Age. That is when Peter, Paul, and all of them started spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. And, honestly, is there a better message? No, I don't think so. <sighs> but that said, most creationists I know are not flat earthers. And most flat earthers that I'm aware of are evolutionists. This might sound illogical. And I agree. Maybe it should be. Not that the creationists believe in a globe, but that there would actually be evolutionists that believe in flat earth. Now, there's a simple experiment that you could do, so simple, that proves the Earth is not flat. It doesn't take much equipment either. Realistically, you just need to go out to the ocean with a motorboat. Start going out to this, out away from the land, and watch what happens. It's going to happen. It's really cool. Things are going to drop below the horizon. They don't get smaller as you go further away. They drop below the horizon. As a former member of the United States Navy, I have seen this on so many occasions. I don't even have to think about it. Oh, you don't want to spend several, well, probably thousand dollars to get a boat that can actually take the ocean? I hear you. I get it. I can't either. I was fortunate to spend five years of my life on a U.S. Navy ship. But there's a simpler experiment. Day and night. Now what am I saying? Well, it's quite simple. <sighs> I'm of the personal contention that if the Earth is flat, night can't exist. But there is night. That's my point. Now we know that light travels equally in all directions from its source. This is physics. This is something every one of us should have learned in high school. Now, flat earthers contend that the sun is somewhere up above directly over the earth. Really? Now, they also contend that somehow the sun rotates around the plate. Huh? <sighs> now, one thing they won't tell you, because they don't have an answer, is whether the Earth, the plate, as they call it, is concave or convex. And for my experiment, it doesn't matter. Take a plate, just a normative plate. I don't personally care how big it is. I mean, take a flashlight to be symbolic of your sun. Use a dark room. Keep the flashlight directly over the plate. You can have it on one side. 
on one of the sides, you know, as long as it's in the middle of the plate. That is to say, you can't have it directly in the center of the plate. It doesn't work like that anyway. Kind of like somewhere, like halfway between the edge and the middle. That seems to be how flat earthers say the sun is. I'm going to show you right now. No matter how high up you take that flashlight, there is not going to be a spot on that plate that doesn't have some amount of light on it. This isn't about the moon being a lesser light or anything stupid like that. Is the moon a lesser light? And so far as it reflects the light of the sun? Yes, it is. But it's reflected light. The Earth, if it were flat, would be bathed in direct sunlight. 24 7, 365 to 5. And actually, that's not accurate. Because if the Earth were a plate, time as we understand it wouldn't work very well. Oh, sure, we'd have periods of bright light and dull light. So maybe we could put together some sort of a clock off of that. Kind of a dusk to dusk thing. I don't know. Doesn't seem to work for me. I can't make sense of this one. But I'll be honest. I can't make sense of the idea of a flat Earth. Really? My experiences tell me no. My observations tell me no. Science tells me no. And yet, some people persist in it. I personally would like to believe, and I know I'm wrong, I would like to believe that this whole thing started out as a stupid joke. Kind of like the Storm Area 51 thing was a joke that got out of hand. But nope, people are very serious about this. Why? Why? I don't get it. Now, it bothers me when people try to use the Bible to justify Flat Earth. Sure, the way Genesis is written, it sounds like God created a plate and put a transparent bucket over the top of it. But that's not what he did. And later, other testimonies come along that indicate, no, nah, the Earth really isn't flat, it's more of a circle. A circle. Well, the words translate circle in most Bibles it doesn't refer to a plate. It seems to indicate more of a spherical type of object. But that's not how people want to read it. Especially those who want to portray Christians as anti-science. Not that we're anti-science, we're just kind of anti-stupid. So, see flat earthers. Seriously, take a flashlight and a plate in a dark room. Why don't you see just how much light is on that plate? Show me pictures if you can. Let me assure you, the earth's not flat. It can't be. And when you argue sea level, by the way, guys, something you might want to think about. Inertia. If the Earth is spinning the way those of us who believe the Earth is a globe does spin, all water on the Earth is held on the Earth by the Earth's inertia. So as the Earth spins, water sticks to the globe. I'd be afraid of what would happen if the Earth stopped spinning. Honestly. What would happen if our planet stopped spinning? That's a scary thought. The moon doesn't spin. It's tidally locked to the Earth. There's minimal atmosphere. I say minimal because the Earth's atmosphere does extend up to the moon. It's just 
you're not going to be able to breathe up there at all. There's not enough atmosphere to breathe. But the moon is totally locked to Earth. No real water of its own. There's nothing directly observable. I'm not going to say there's no indications of water. There are. It's just not enough for anything specific. So, it does make me wonder what would happen if the Earth stopped spinning? And yeah, I know. You've had Earthers would say the Earth doesn't spin. But it's traveling upwards at a speed of, what, 39 miles per hour or something stupid like that? But then again, you guys really don't seem to understand physics. After all, inertia. And you can prove this one. Take a bucket. Fill it, I don't know, a quarter or half way with water. Attach a string to the handle. Now swing it. The water will stay in the bucket. And as long as you keep spinning it, it'll stay. The Earth does the same thing. Only on a much larger level. Now, I don't know how this is so hard to understand. I don't. Now, I'm not going to get into anything deep with regards to Bible verses today. I don't see a point to it. The flat earth is a lie. It is an out and out lie. Can't be proven. And then again, if you notice that a lot of flat earthers say that science is a lie. I don't know. Something tells me that they can't both be true. One or the other is most assuredly false. And I think the false thing here is flat earth. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. After all, I'm just some old U.S. Navy veteran who sits on his church's governing board, has circumnavigated the globe, points radio antennas in various directions only to hear his own signal come back to him. You don't have to take my word for it. No. You can try another experiment. Equally costly as the boat experiment. With far less equipment than most of us have this. A car. Pick a point and start driving either north or south. Pick, pick a star system. Wait and drive. Eventually, that star system you've picked up is going to disappear. Well, unless you're in Australia, in which case, yeah, you're kind of... You can't really get off, off your continent. But if you live in, like, North America, South America, Africa, Russia, this isn't that hard to do. Especially if you live in North America. Make sure you have a passport. Keep driving south. Drive all the way south until you reach the tip of South America. You're no longer going to see the Big Dipper. You're not going to see the North Star. Any of those Northern Hemisphere star systems, you're not going to see. You're going to see the Southern Cross, though. That's one I wish I could see again, personally. But you're not going to see any of these other star systems. And I'm going to tell you right now, if the Earth were simply a plate, you would see them. Science wins this round. Sorry, Flat Earthers, you lose. But then again, to say that God made the Earth a plate limits the power of God. If God is infinite, how can an infinite God not create a world that is spherical? 
He can. He did. Now, for those of you who want to challenge me with the foolish question of, can God create a rock that even he cannot move? I've known this answer for decades. He is the rock that cannot be moved. Nice try. God is the same today, tomorrow, yesterday, and forever. He does not change. His grace and His mercy abound forever. His forgiveness is there for whoever wants it. Whoever is willing to repent. Because He does not want for any of us to be lost. I pray that everyone will repent of their sins. I pray that we will all find the grace of Christ, who calls us through His Word, through the words of the Bible, by the beckoning of the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Sacraments, Communion, and Baptism. God doesn't want you or I to spend any eternity in hell. But he doesn't want us to live mired in our sins either. Denying his creative power. That he create a world that's spherical. Denying who he is and his power. You're sinning against God. You're denying him who he is. Please repent. I beg of you. The Lord God is there. He beckons all of us, if only we'd listen. There are churches. They still preach the truth of the gospel. Not many, but they are there. If the church is talking about wealth and prosperity, flee. If a church is pointing to the cross of Christ, saying he died upon the cross and rose again that you may live that might be the best place to be if they take the words this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins Take, take it, believe it. Don't, don't confuse. Don't question how or why. Is, means, is. And the earth, by the way, is round. I leave it to you to look into it for yourself. Find a church. A church that doesn't teach wealth and prosperity. A church that doesn't teach confusion. And there are many churches that teach confusion. Find a church that teaches and preaches Christ and Him crucified. And listen carefully. Now that you, Bible dealers, I know how you like miracles. Let me point out something about miracles. Miracles are temporary and rare. If you were to actually take the Bible and put it on a timeline, many of those miracles were hundreds of years apart. They are temporary suspensions of the laws of nature by the very God who created those laws. And they are always meant for a purpose. They weren't just something that was happenstance and common. If you look carefully, people were frightened when these miracles happened. And rightly so. Only God can, in any way, shape, or form, truly suspend the laws of nature 
reverse the course of diseases, or restore sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. We can't really do that. We can approximate with our technology. But to truly do that, we're nowhere near capable. And our science has only done one thing. It's shown just how weak we humans really are. I bid you a good day. It is the Lord's day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.